My roommate is a vampire by Dennis the Menace, read by Deathlight. Chapter 13, Into the Darkness. We ducked back outside, closing all the windows and locking the doors. Luna's guard stood outside, stored as ever. It seemed that if I stayed outside the moonlight long enough, even on a full moon, I would slowly change back. It was still a painstaking process, and after waiting at least an hour for my claws to retract and my coat to shrink, we talked to Fluttershy. The sweet thing, she let us sleep over for the night. Any putting friends with the princess is a friend of mine. Vinyl still wanted to deck her, but Fluttershy assuaged her fears. And don't worry, I'm sworn to secrecy, and by loyalty too, and even more importantly than that, a pinky promise, even though I really don't understand what's going on. Vinyl took the couch. She had offered, but I really want to sleep on the floor. I trotted around in a circle before settling down into a comfortable position. Vinyl started. What are you doing? I don't know. It just felt right. I admitted. Things would never be the same for either of us. There was no going back. We had reached that pivotal moment, past the point of no return. We had a few hours until daybreak, and we decided to make the most of it. Vinyl was out like a light and began to snore softly. My eyelids drooped, a wave of exhaustion flowing over me. Lights, Lights camera, camera, action. action. Enter, Enter an expensive, expensive mansion, mansion nearly the size, the size of the castle, castle with an elegant hedge, hedge garden with a fountain in the center. center. The family that lived there was rich. Cue classical, classical music, music somber and simplistic, simplistic in melody, transitioned transition inside the hall. A despondent little filly near the massive window, the sunlight casting a shadow that stretched across the smooth floor. A second shadow, her mother. Mother, did I do good? Average. Oh. Uh, again, and this time, no mistakes. Yes, mother. Cut. The train ride was uneventful, mostly just me sulking near the windows. Vinyl went home. The princess? Well, she was long gone. She didn't have time to deal with us lesser mortals, I suppose. Or maybe she was just busy. In any case, I still had to rehearse. I'd skipped out for at least a week. There's gonna be hell to pay. Where in Tartarus have you been? Frederick demanded the second I walked into the studio. What? The entire week you've been gone. You haven't been answering your calls. You haven't come to rehearsals. He began pounding his hoof for emphasis on each point. What, what to say at a time, time like, like this? this? Sorry. I mumbled. I've been busy as of late. Busy making out with your mare friend? My eyes flashed and I nearly was at his throat, inches away from throttling him profusely. What I do in my own personal life is none of your business. The jaws hit the floor. Harpo and Beauty Breath startled, unable to comprehend the calm stoic Octavia losing her cool. Frederick mumbled an apology. He sniffed, his nose scrunched up in disgust at our close proximity. Oh, you smell like a wet dog. Are, Are you gonna, gonna let him talk, talk like that? that? Show, Show him his boss. boss. And you look like you just stuck your face in a blender and set it on high. But you don't see us telling you about it. I snapped before I could even process the words that were coming out of my mouth. I stuffed a hoof into my mouth, my eyes bulging. Oh, you have the right to remain burned. Petey hollered, shoving her hoof into his face. Harper glanced worriedly at me, idly strumming his harp. What was I saying? I, I'm sorry. I barely managed to stammer before I ran from the room, not even bothering to bring my cello along with me. Beauty screamed. Scorched! What got into her? Frederick snapped. I stormed out of the building, trying to calm myself. How would I face them again? At least I had an excuse for not showing up tomorrow. Pony Joe's Donut Shop. I'd expected something a little more professional, or at least secretive. In my saddlebags, my phone rang. Yeah, what? I asked abrasively. I didn't even check who was calling. Octavia? I jumped. Father? Hello? It'd mean the world to your mother if you'd come to visit. I read my forehead. Um, of course. She was still in the hospital. Leave it to my mother to take advantage of a bump on her forehead. Although, Vinyl did have a pretty mean right hook. Where is she? Canalot Hospital, 50th floor, room F. I'll be there in five. I flipped my phone shut. Father was always distant, impersonal. He only spoke out if necessary, even with his own wife and daughter. They were perfect for each other. Who knows, maybe this will go well. I'll say hello and be on my way. I don't want you hanging around that DJ! You don't get to tell me what to do! I shouted before I realized what I was saying. Those weren't my words. It was that voice! Watch your mouth, young filly! I'm still your mother! She shouted back. I'm not your filly anymore! You'll do as I say! Fuck you! I barked impulsively. She gasped in horror. 
Octavia! I slammed the door behind me, cringing as I heard the sound of glass shattering all over the floor. Doctors and nurses stared. One dropped the pencil she was holding in her mouth. A desk pony spilled her coffee. You gotta hear a pin drop. I can fix that. That, that went well. well. How was your day? Pretty, Pretty awful. awful. Thanks, Thanks for asking. Octi, how's dinner coming along? Octi? And her little last month's rent. I should be scared. Whoa, shiny. I couldn't turn my eyes away from the silver kitchen knife. Wait, Octi, don't touch that. And you still touched it. Upon touching it, my hoof seemed to burn and sizzle. It seems my hoof is spontaneously combusted into flames. I noted dully, holding it up for her to see. Quiet, Final said. Shall I get the fire extinguisher? Breaking case of supernatural creatures. Please do. Cue screaming. <laughs> First day of the lichen, and somehow I managed to end up in the doghouse. Final hadn't wanted me to stay home by myself. She even insisted on having somebody come over to watch me. Having any cravings? Any homicidal thoughts lately? Sure, sure. I could I kill, kill you, you for doing this to me, but I won't. I assure you, I'm fine, I lied. I'm perfectly capable of taking care of myself. Look, I'm not too comfortable with this. I'll have somebody come check up on you when they can, alright? The second that door closed, I began pacing in a circle. My tail wagged around. Even as I tried to read, take my mind off things. I couldn't stay still. I had to move. I couldn't help it. I had no control over my own faculties. I sat down on the couch, only to start scratching. It was getting worse. They are weak. The voice in my head wouldn't shut up. I needed something, anything to take my mind off the current situation. Turning to the bottle would have been irresponsible. I was better than this. Better than the lichen in me. You are strong. I slumped over, groaning. I took out a glass with two ice cubes and a bottle of scotch, pouring a good amount in. Swirling it around, I stood the orange liquor, before tilting the glass back. It was unbecoming of me, really. I didn't booze very much. Once in a while, maybe. Not all the time. You're an alpha mare. Shut up. The drink went down like fire. You poor, helpless thing. I needed a refill. There was a time when I rejected things like destiny or fate. I was starting to figure out I had the worst luck in Equestria. There is nothing more deceiving than the belief that you run your own life, that you have some semblance of control, that you are large and in charge. We are all insufficient specks dust in an infinite universe, trying to make the best of the situation. No pony knew what they were doing, why they were doing in the first place. It's just like gambling. The cards have been dealt and what was left was us grasping at straws. You play or you pray. Maybe it was like playing jazz music. You just roll with it, you just improvise. I knocked another one back. Yeesh! Ponies always told me I got sappy and philosophical when I drank. And where was I in the middle of all this? Was I still living in a dream? Where was the Kenilla upscale penthouse? The bits, the extravagant parties, and the concert in the Blue Blood Hall. That dream was starting to slip anyways. No, no, someday. I said, if only to reassure myself. Bottoms up. Someday a dream will come true. How pathetic. Was that how I coped with the truth? Is that what I told myself to help me sleep at night? I was the mule, always trotting forward for that carrot that dangled just out of reach. That dream of mine had turned around on me. Who was I? Nobody. Some two-bit has-been cello player for a coordinate playing lounge music just to pay the rent. We'd all been banking on the Grand Galbing Gala to rake in the cash. Reality came crashing down on me, and I was treated with a glimpse into my bleak future. Suddenly I was old. My dream? Not a chance. It wasn't going to happen, and it probably never would, because I wasn't ever going to do it anyways. That was the old Octavia, weak and feeble. I am new Octavia, stronger, faster, better. At least I had family. Mom, she, she cares, I know it, I said. Somehow I thought saying it aloud would make it come true. Your mother despised you. I still had friends. You don't have friends. Acquaintances? Coworkers maybe? They don't deserve you. Shut up! I hurled the ball against the wall, spotting it shatter on impact. I clenched my head, groaning, falling to my knees. I always do a hangover straight from Tartarus. Let no pun stand in your way. Prove your dominance. I didn't even feel my head at the ground as I passed out. I sat in the shadows in the furthest corner of the room. The balcony window had been shattered. My sharp ears twitched. Able to pick up the faint sound of Vinyl's hoofsteps approaching. My heart raced as she came closer. 
The final moment as she fished out the key out of her bags and shoved it into the lock, twisting it. The door swung open, final startled. Jeez, Octi, you look like hell. She stepped forward into the light. She stopped when she saw my face. Is that blood? Dark crimson stained my coat and muzzle. It was like the life had been sucked out of my eyes. I was scared, traumatized, vinyl. I stared off into the distance, in a thousand yard stare. All it took was a nod and vinyl dropped her bags, rushing over to me. What happened? I don't know. I spat. I felt the rise of that old familiar feeling in my gut. Wait, no, that just- <clears throat> I ran over to the bathroom, emptying the content of my stomach into the toilet. What had I eaten? Never mind, I don't want to know. Ignorant bliss. Did you drink? You bet your ass I did. I gasped, wiping my mouth before I continued to retch. My contact said she rang the doorbell at least a dozen times. She even tried knocking and considered bucking the door down. Final leaned in. I didn't want to kiss. It made me sick. Instead, she licked the blood from my cheek, smacking her lips. Rabbit. I don't even want to know how she knew what rabbit blood tasted like. What did you do? I already told you. I don't know. One second I was in the loft, passed on the floor, and then I woke up. I was here. Except this time, I was covered in- Ugh. Vina wasn't playing anymore. She locked all the doors, closing all the windows, pulling all the curtains. Did any pony see you? She demanded. How am I supposed to know? I groaned. For a while, Vina struggled over what to do, muttering to herself before settling on a decision. Octavia, I gotta run. What? She sighed. It seemed like she was in a hurry. You wanna know what I do for the inner circle? This is what I do. I run damage control. Now I gotta go. I clean up my mess. It's practically the dead of the night, Vinyl. How are you even gonna find out what I did? I got this. She grinned cockily. Vinyl? She turned briefly. We're gonna say something? No, no, never mind. Go ahead. Okay, fine. I heaved a heavy sigh. <sighs> I don't know how to tell you this. You wanna break up? Vinyl asked. I stammered. No, 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 no. I simply want to take a break. Is that what they call it these days? Had there been anything in between us in the first place? Was it something official? Or was it something that needed no words? We'd never discussed anything. I'd kissed her and she'd kissed me. We'd slept together and cuddled for a while. That was it, really. It seemed that we passed the initial puppy love stage in our relationship. Pardon the pun. After the novelty and passion had worn off, I had seemed so sure that Vano was the object of my desires in the heat of the moment. Vinyl, a break doesn't mean anything, just some distance. Well, if it makes you feel any better, I think so too. What? I gawked. Frankly, I'm a little insulted. Octi, the last thing right now you need is a relationship. You've got too much on your plate. I've got a job, performances. You still gotta deal with this new body of yours. You don't need me to make things worse. You don't do that. Maybe I don't, but your parents are gonna give you enough grief already. Let's not give them another reason to make your life miserable, alright? That's so stupid. I sniffed. Let's just call it off for a while, huh? This was a blessing in disguise. I nodded, a bit too eagerly. My thoughts exactly. Thank you, Vinyl. It was a clean break. We'd severed our relationship cleanly. And both parties came out unscathed. It was almost too perfect. But I suppose in a while, things had to work out, right? But don't get any ideas. I'm not moving out, you know. I smiled, moving closer to the door. I poked her head through again. I'll still be here, don't worry. She winked. You're not alone in this. My journey continued through the night. I had a feeling things were just getting started. And the band played on. Hello everybody, um, so yeah, this chapter... There's a bunch of stuff that happened, um... Octavia drank and lost control of her like inside. And um, I'm kind of surprised Vinyl didn't react a bit differently. I mean, I would think the first thing she would spot was the blood before she even spotted her. So, uh, whatever, I guess. Um, things go on. And <sighs> I'm cold. I don't think my body temperature quite got, quite got back up to normal temp because I walked six freaking miles out in the cold. <sighs> I'll see you guys next time. I'm going to go take a hot shower.